The wing is Keegan Hartway, and Strite wants to throw. Slipped on his back foot. He throws a wobble. He had a man behind the defense. It's caught. Across the 30, down inside the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Norrington gets the catch. Time now for the Jerry Sin Show. Recorded at Edgar Family Restaurant in Edgar. And sponsored by Security Health Plan. Security Health Plan. Promises kept plain and simple. Visit securityhealth.org today. Welcome to the Jerry Sin Show. I'm your host, Jason Zaleski. Jerry Sin Show, weekly sponsored by Security Health Plan. Promises kept plain and simple here at uh, Edgar Family Restaurant with Edgar head football coach Jerry Sins. Coach, we, uh, or I, joked a little bit last week uh, about if you beat Auburndale, uh, then you got to go on the field and talk to Coach Jay Anderson and you got to at least wish him good luck the next week. We talked about that last week. And then maybe uh, you know give him some words of uh, inspiration or something. I don't know what you did, but um, game was tied. We're gonna I'm gonna show you the clip here. What turned out to be the game-winning touchdown. Uh, and as we're showing that to the folks uh, at home, uh, game's tied. This is about four minutes or so left in the game. They're tied at 14. And um, you know there, there's a couple of ways you can win a football game, uh, right? You can do it uh, do it on the ground, do it traditionally. Uh, well, I'm gonna zoom that in here on the, on this next clip. But why not just win the game? Uh, maybe a catch of the year across high school football. Uh, now, Auburndale does go in the intercept, uh, Colby, a couple minutes after this, so the defense clinched it. But there's uh, Alex Wilfert uh, from Trayton Weber. You saw those guys uh, recently. Uh, thoughts on that catch by Alex? Yeah, I saw it on TV, and uh, we talked about it with the kids on Sunday night because, of course, obviously we were, you know, hoping for a possible way to get a part of the conference championship too and that's the only way it could happen but um i said yeah you see guys in the pros make those catches but you don't see guys in high school <laughs> make catches like that very often so it was it was definitely uh we we knew when we played auburndale that he was a very talented guy yes. especially defensively i thought the guy really you know had a nose for the ball and moved around well and um and so it's it's not like a total <laughs> shock, but it, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it was a very good play. I first ran into Alex. This is the Edgar football show, by the way. But I <laughs> ran into Alex in 2020. Uh, that year, Auburndale played just a one-year eight-man. Uh, they were some short on things in the COVID and everything else. So he caught a catch in the end zone, a juggling catch. He might have been a freshman then, I, whatever he was, two years sophomore, two, yeah. sophomore then. Um, he makes a juggling catch with zeros on the clock to win the game. So he's been doing this stuff his, um, his whole career, <laughs> Alex right. Wilford has. Fortunately for you, you won't have to see Auburndale in the postseason. Uh, so you're, you're through with them. We'll talk about postseason here in just a little bit. Uh, but first, uh, 35 nothing. You had Marathon come over on Friday night. Um, I, I took a look at some of these stats. If you had people didn't get a chance to watch the game, we, I, I like to kind of pour over stats uh, the week after. You had three pass attempts from your offense. They had 28 pass attempts and hoax them out with 27 of those. How did you withstand the air assault from the Marathon Red Raiders? Yeah, they passed the ball well. We, we actually had nine pass plays in our first script of 20. Um, we ended up only throwing three. I mean, our first one was our only completion. First play of the game, we completed a 64-yarder for a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. um, after that, our quarterback ran once or twice when when there were pass plays, and he scrambled and uh, whatever. And the other ones, he probably got sacked, you know, once or twice. Once I know he dropped the ball, so then he had to jump on and recover it. <laughs> and so, yeah, it wasn't our plan to only pass three times. It just turned out that way. And then, of course, once we got ahead, well, we, we tend to not pass when we're ahead, so then it just kind of happened that way. Yeah, and he happened to have an interception in the game, too. Right. So that sometimes, so the you know, old uh, football coaches, you're not in that category. <laughs> you know, the, the, the old, old football coaches, you know, they always said you, you can throw a ball, but only one thing good can happen and two things bad can happen. And so there are some reasons maybe not to throw the ball. You'll figure that out. Uh, another nice night uh, rushing, uh, 225 yards. You held them to just 76. So tackling getting better defensively as the seasons went on? I think so. Um, Matt Anderson, I mean, he, he's a very good runner. Um, yeah. And uh, he ran right over some of our guys early in the game, you know, several times. Um, eventually we had to game tackle him more. But we were happy that we got three guys that are finally carrying the ball pretty well now. Carter Butt had about 100 yards. 
but Kobe Weisberger had 70 something and um, Jace Applebeck had 60 something. Well, that's what we always work for is to try to get three guys that are carrying the ball and all taking the weight off each other's shoulders, so to speak. So we're hoping maybe we can keep that going in the playoffs. Coach says, um, you know, something-ish yards. He's always exactly right, by the way. Uh, he knows his, his football up and down. Carter, about 98 yards. Uh, Colby Weisenberger, 72. Two touchdowns for Colby on, uh, on Friday night. Uh, and then um, uh, Leighton Schuett with 24 yards. Uh, Jace Applebeck with 64 yards. So you were... Uh, you're, you're certainly uh, right on there. Uh, let's go back to the opening touchdown. It was the only completed pass, so I think we can talk about that a little bit. You told Tom after the game that Avery Normington's got some speed. Um, how how can you get, you know, you're doing it, but is there is there a way to get the speed guys even more involved now come playoffs? I think we might have to. Um, you know, Friday night looks like it's going to be nice, 60-something degrees, yeah. so certainly we're going to try again Friday out late and um, shoe it. Mm -hmm. And Avery are both very fast runners, and they both have good hands too. Um, like I said, we we tend, you know, when we're playing teams like Auburndale who throws the ball so well, well then we we try to keep it away from them. It's kind of the same thing we did when we played Stratford, um, and of course you're going to keep it away from them. Well, you, you know, you do that better by running. Um, mm -hmm. We did have, we scored in our first two plays of the game against Marathon, and of course, at that point, our defensive coach said to me, will you give us a rest on defense? We're on the field all the time. I said, well, what a we're, problem, yeah. we're not going to tell the guy to fall down in the three-yard line or something <laughs> just to give you a rest, but of course, yeah, the defense pretty much played the whole first quarter because we were scoring in one play, but... Um, not by, not necessarily by design, but it just, it just happened that way. So, um, yeah, the passing, we we need to keep working on the passing. There's no doubt about it. Uh, last about the regular season, uh, you do end up as, as conference champs, so you get another uh, championship banner uh, to, to put up or at least to talk about. Um, you head into the postseason now as a two seed. How do you, you know, this is a school sport, so let's go to grades now. Uh, how do you, what kind of grade would you put on the regular season for your guys? I think pretty well. I mean, obviously, the Colby game was our homecoming week. Um, we, we didn't play that well. We started out well. We played in a quarter and a half mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our best player was not feeling well that day. You know, was no, never make excuses. But yeah, that's just what happened. We planned on running him 25 times that game, but uh, with the way it was, he only carried seven or eight times. All that put a kind of a crimp in our offense. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, so anyway, but since then, I think our seniors have been good leaders. They, they've helped us out a lot, even though they're small in number, that they're playing really hard. And uh, so for us to go 8-1 and one in a conference as competitive as ours, I, I think we had a good year. Good. Uh, we think so, too. Uh, all right, uh, moving now to postseason. Uh, we had our, our uh, seed projections. Um, WI threw us a little bit of a curveball. They, they put Regis into your grouping, which uh, has them as the one, you as the two. Aside from that, you've got four teams in your grouping from the Dunn St. Croix Conference. So let's maybe start with that. What do you know about that conference? I know you've got some personal ties, but what do you know about that, that group of four, especially from that conference? Well, yeah, that's the conference I played in when I was in high school. Um, same name way back in the 60s. Um, teams, are, teams are very different, you know, back then. Oh yeah, we used to play Baldwin Woodville and Somerset and some of these other schools, yeah. but um, those schools are now 500 kids or whatever. And of course, Elmwood is, is small. They're now co oping with Plum City, but they're in that, that conference. Um, like Turtle Lake was, was not in it back then. Yeah. Um, Spring Valley, yeah, Spring mm -hmm. Valley's in there. They were in there, so um, yeah, I'm pretty familiar, obviously, with that area and with those teams. My brothers still live in that area, so they go to the games. They fill me in once in a while. I know Elmwood's got a great running back, got a guy with 2,200 yards, so um, it'd be nice to see him. But I, yeah, I don't know if that'll happen. But if um, being the two seed, if you do your job, you'll have at least two home games. So that's got to be a little bit reassuring to be able to play at home. Yeah, it's always nice because yeah, most of these teams are a long ways from us. I mean, 
if we have to travel to them, most of them are 100 to 120 miles away. So, uh, yeah, it's certainly nice to have them at home. Turtle Lake, uh, they go by the Lakers, not the Turtles, which has always been confusing for me because you've got Shell Lake not that far away that is also the Lakers. So somebody uh, should have broke the tie there and somebody should have been the Shells or the Turtles. But be that as it may, uh, Turtle Lake's got a couple big running backs or a couple running backs put up some big numbers. Um, so the tackling again by defense will have to be key on Friday night. Yeah, they have three very skilled guys at least and their numbers three, four, and five. Three and four are brothers, maybe even twins. I don't know, they're both seniors. They both weigh about 190. One of them's got 800 and something yards rushing and the other guy's got 600 and something yards receiving. And then five is the quarterback and he's the dual purpose guy. He's passed for about a thousand yards and run for about 600. So they certainly got some guys that are, are weapons. Maybe their toughest guy, maybe number 12, who's their fullback and middle linebacker. And uh, he's a tackling machine on defense and, and a pretty good blocker on offense. So he's another guy we have to contend with. Uh, folks that go to the game on Friday night, or, or if they're, they can't make it there, they watch it uh, with us. Um, Maybe it's the end of the first quarter. Forget about what the scoreboard says, but how will people at home, because this is a team that, that nobody probably around here has ever seen, Turtle Lake. Um, how will people watching the game know that things are going according to Coach Sins' plan after the first quarter? Well, obviously, we're going to have to be running the ball you know, fairly well, even though once it, again, we'll come up planning to pass some and the, if the weather is nice like they say it's going to be maybe it'll work you know a little better this week hopefully the field is dry which i think it's going to be and uh yeah as long as we're not making any mistakes getting too many penalties all that things are going kind of the way a guy plans <laughs> if you happen to, to win on friday night uh, you'll take on the winner of spring valley and hurley there are those Hurley North Stars are again, right? right? right. Uh, maybe, and, and you never know, except this time it would have to be at, at your place. No long drives up to Hurley. Um, how, do you, how do you go about collecting film for those games? Has film already been shared from, uh, I guess, over the weekend? Um, well, the WIA requires each team to, pretty much on Saturday morning, share your last two games with who your next opponent's going to be and, and everybody's very good about that now and everybody either has huddle or some other format like that mm -hmm. and and some of those are actually now getting a little better now but I think they're very clear and, and very nice so yeah we'll whoever we play uh, if we win we'll have their information right away on Saturday morning and they'll have ours and then you just go from there and, and the key is I think not to look ahead because you gotta, you gotta worry about who you have you know each week and uh, because you never know the team you might be looking ahead to might get beat and then you're not playing them anyway yeah. so you just wasted effort third year of computerized seating. The WI tells us the first two years there were very few, almost no upsets at all through that uh, that seed process. So I guess that's good. That means that the teams are being categorized uh, correctly. Um, you know, but with that, with that being said, you know, when something like that happens, there is an upset. Um, how are you and the coaches able to kind of undo what you did maybe in that preparation and now have to reel it back in and now look at a different team? Yeah, I... You know, the seating stuff, to me, I obviously don't understand it that well because I've never seen, you know, the, the criteria that's used. I know that every year there's a few situations where it does not seem to make sense. Um, like, you know, where I think this year one of the games we thought was maybe uh, Maple Northwestern and St. Clair Falls. Mm -hmm. And I believe Maple beat them head to head and they're in the same bracket. And, and yet St. Craig got the one seed and they got the two and they also have a better record and there's a couple other places down by Milwaukee that have the same situation uh, you know a situation like with Colby dropping all the way from a one seed to a four with a six point loss I, that seems like a big drop to me um, to go from a one seed to a four seed with one six point loss to another eight and one team but I don't know um, I, I would have kind of thought that yeah, maybe Colby S and Auburn Dale might all be two seeds, but um, mm -hmm. set us a two, three, and a four. So, right, right. Yeah. yeah, interesting for sure. We actually talked about Northwestern and Maple on, on our Valley Sports uh, reveal show on Saturday morning. The difference there seemed, because you're exactly right, Northwestern, the two conference champs, uh, St. Croix, the one, not conference champs, but 
the, uh, the mathematical formula doesn't take into account conference champions. What it seemed to come down to was, in that case, Northwestern's non-conference opponent, or the two opponents had a combined record of 6-12, and 12, whereas uh, St. Croix Falls' non-conference opponents were 15-3. and three. So that non-conference put their strength of schedule okay. is, uh, on, on a full year. But anyway, that's for a whole different show, and we okay. can maybe after the season's done, you and I can get together and maybe have some other people come and talk about that. Um, a little bit bittersweet today, uh, last of our uh, Jerry Sins uh, shows for the season. We're going to let Coach go and uh, focus on the playoffs. So uh, thanks for being here every week. Thanks for uh, even going through some of the, the schedule changes. We appreciate having well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Coach, get to stay, uh, Coach and I get to stay after the show and talk about other stuff that you don't get to find out about. Um, <laughs> so that's probably the most fun for me. Uh, okay. So uh, good luck on Friday. Again, Tom King will have the call. If you can't make it, uh, we'll have it live on Zaleski Sports. Uh, we always end with, uh, with a little bit not high school football. So Packers um, have lost two games in a row now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the coach wanted me to bring this up. Um, you know, it's probably been a long time since you've lost two games in a row. But if you were to give some advice to the, to the team on, you know, you lose back-to-back -back games, that's one thing. But you lose three, now you're on a losing streak. Uh, what would what's some advice you can give to a team that's a little bit on the outs right now? Well, I, I mean, personally, I think they've got to get their offensive line straightened out. Um, yeah. yeah, they've given up. Didn't run the ball very effectively. Only rushed for about 60 yards. And, of course, Rodgers was under pressure and getting sacked. And then he got sacked four times, got hit about 10 times. Yeah. Um, I think they got good offensive linemen. I don't know if they're just not in sync with playing with one another because Bakhtiari just came back and Jiggin just come back. But I, I think that's where you got to start. You always have to start with the offensive and the defensive lines. You know, people think, oh, you got to call different plays or you got to use a different strategy or run a different offense. No, that generally doesn't straighten anything out. It, you always have to start with the line. And if you get that straightened out, then the whole team seems to play well. Guys like me and you that maybe, maybe might understand football maybe more than, you know, somebody else. Sometime in the first quarter, I said, this game's over. I mean, I, you kind of knew right away by the looks of it, I thought. Uh, but in the NFL these days, they get to play now an extra game. So they're playing 17 games. So it's always been said the NFL is a marathon season. Well, now it's a marathon plus a game. So there is time, but um, you know, those, those Vikings uh, now in first place by, uh, by a couple games. Got to be a little bit concerning to Packer fans, maybe. I would think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, Coach, best of luck on Friday night. Uh, we, we wish you well. We'll all be watching. Thank you very much. All right. That'll do it for this uh, week's Jerry Sin Show and this season of the Jerry Sin Show. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night. You know better. When you see it. All right, one, two, three. But sometimes it's a little harder to tell what better looks like, and you could use a little help. Thanks, Mom. Security Health Plan. Everything you need in a health plan. Everything you'd expect from a good neighbor.